Hello out there, this is Ain My Pony and welcome to my top 5 yay and nay list of brony things I personally like and dislike. If your individual preferences differ, good for you. And you are more than welcome to share your own version of this list in the comments below or in your own video reply if you feel productive. However, sending hate my way for not enjoying the same things you do will just get an annoyed eye roll out of me. But it has been long enough since my last MLP related top list, so without any further stalling, let's dive into it. Number 4. Meh. MLP Cosplay. But then why don't you know about those amazing cosplayers like Fireteam Harmony, Pyro Temper Tantrum or Lady Mella? Yes, but I also know about those scruffy half ass cosplays when some fanboy or girl puts a cheap plastic wig on their head and believes they are ready to win a cosplay contest. Or the ones with a lot of effort put into it but which still look uncanny as hell. There are absolutely gorgeous cosplays out there, but also the ones that I wish I wouldn't know about. It really depends on what you do with a cosplay. In and of itself, it is neutral really. In addition, its quality is unaffected by its relation to the fandom. And that's how it ended up here. Somewhat similar to... Number 3. Meh. Pony Music. I mean remixes of songs from the show as well as completely original music made by fans. Just because the song is pony themed doesn't automatically make it good. At the same time, there is objectively great brony music, no matter what the trolls and haters claim about fan content. But at the end of the day you have to measure each song individually and the brony factor actually only plays a minor if any role. What makes pony music as a whole meh. Number 2. Meh. MLP Games. As far as I know, there are not many noteworthy official games, except maybe that infamous city builder app which had been meh in it of itself. A bit of casual fun, but nothing really stunning. And for fan games, it is the same as for cosplays and music. Most often, MLP is just a part of the game's theme that doesn't contribute to the game's quality. Fighting is Magic did not become a lesser game because it got turned into them Fighting Hurts, its own original IP. Maybe even the opposite. Number 1. Meh. Clopperhut. And yes, to avoid any ambiguity, I am talking about NSFW fan art, media for the adult audience, pony porn if you will. And this time I don't mean the individual quality of the pieces that makes it neutral, I am talking about the idea itself. No matter what some groups of people try to tell you, at the end of the day sexuality is something natural, not to say one of the most natural things in existence. If it wouldn't be, we literally wouldn't be here. So the idea that an adult person, or even worse, a teenager, who is passionate about something might include those passions into their sexual fantasies or the other way around isn't really that surprising. And I don't really see any reason to judge it either. I recommend checking out Why Ponies Can Be Sexy by Give and Take or even my own video on that topic. Now I do realize that it is a bit more delicate when it comes to MLP, a genre primarily made for a younger audience with a cast that might or might not still be adolescents. I can only repeat what I said in my video about clopping. Adult stuff has to be kept in the separate adult places where it belongs anyway so that kids and anybody not interested don't get exposed to it. About the thing with the pony's age, admittedly a can of worms that goes beyond the scope of this video. But as long as we are talking about mature consenting and let's not forget fictional characters, I'd say let them clobbers do their thing in their own places. Meh. But now for the more interesting lists. Number 5. Most convention panels, especially those on the main stage. There are great panels out there that actually worth your time. Comedic panels like AC Ray's best stand-up comedy, panels with a practical side that actually teach you something, interactive panels like Lip Sync Battle. But often enough, panels are just some people sitting behind microphones giving a dry presentation and or answering questions. Sadly, especially guest of honor panels end up like this most of the time. I sat through a bunch of them, especially those with charismatic and funny people like Peter New, but not even they could save a boring concept that repeats itself convention after convention. Number 5. Yay. Head cannons. At least a certain kind of head cannons. Those that are based on evidence in the show and have some legitimacy to it, like figuring out the age of the main six, assumptions how magic works in Equestria, or deciphering the MLP timeline. The kind of stuff that gets your wheels turning and makes interesting content for the Ask series, for example. 
Head cannons I don't like are just random ideas that maybe fill open questions in the show canon. Do you think it was Starswell who crafted the elements? Is Celestia Trilet from the future who traveled back in time? I have a headcanon that the real EQG Sunset Simmer died in an accident and got replaced by Pony Sunset Simmer just in time that nobody noticed. Exactly like in Rick and Morty. Well, okay. Okay, that last one is pretty cool, but I'm only saying that because I'm a Rick and Morty fanboy and think everything involving them is awesome, pretty much contradicting my own point from the math list. But here is my issue with those kind of headcanons. They might have potential as setups for fan fictions, but they don't work by themselves. What are those ideas based on? Number 4 <laughs> One Shot Comic Dubs on YouTube this one might make me a little bit of a hypocrite given that I have partaken in some myself and even made one here on this channel. However, that doesn't change that I personally don't enjoy watching them. Those 4-6 to six panel comics you can read in 20 seconds just don't provide enough content for a video in my opinion. You have like 5-10 to 10 seconds intro, the VA is providing some fluff to stretch out the dialogue to maybe 30 seconds of actual content and then it's already time to roll 15 seconds of credits. Maybe this caters perfectly to the short attention span YouTube viewership, but I personally would rather read the original comic and turn to videos for longer content I can actually get invested in. Now, in all fairness, I am aware that those one-shot comic dubs have their place and purpose. They might give exposure to an obscure artist we didn't know about and now we can check out the other one-shots for ourselves. It's also a nice practice ground for aspiring the A's before they tackle entire novels. And especially on YouTube, where regular content has become necessary, those shorter videos might help channels to fill their gaps in production. However, that doesn't change that I don't enjoy watching them. Number 4 Yay! The community. Yes, I guess this one doesn't really scream originality, but it is still something I really enjoy about this fandom. If I would be a more social person, it would probably be a lot further up in the list, as I assume it is for many of you out there. But when I go to a convention, it is not for the panels and also not for the merch. I will not deny that narcissism is a big motivator for me, but at the end of the day, when I am happy to have escaped autograph hunting fans chilling with friends in a hotel room to watch a movie, play games or just hang, is what makes cons actually worthwhile for me. However, there are aspects of the community I could live without. Number 3 Nay! All the drama I'm aware that every community, fandom or other, has drama going on. The bigger the group, the more scandals and gossip and lying and whining. But I also detest it in every other context. My favorite rule in life is, everything is cool as long as nobody gets hurt. Well, drama hurts people left and right. It exaggerates the issues of the involved people increasing their pain. But it also makes everybody watching it feel miserable in the long run. Believe me, I have been there. At some point you take a look into the mirror and see a bugged eyed drama monster. And I know of very few people who would actually enjoy that experience. I personally avoid drama wherever I can and congratulate everybody who does the same. Number 3 Yay! Shipping! Oh, this one probably makes a lot of you groan. Not again, Ain, why it is shipping? Well, at this point I made enough videos about shipping, so I'll keep it short. Somewhere deep inside this tar-like cynical mass that is my soul, there is a tiny romantic that goes Aww! in the face of a good love story or heartwarming image, no matter if straight, gay, interspecies, polio or whatever. I also love ecky humor that is hard to find outside of shipping. The only thing that I not like about it are aggressive hardcore shippers who either try to force their ship on others or harass people for supporting the quote unquote wrong ship. Guys, girls, calm the f down. There are no wrong ships. Except flashlight, that's just stupid and I'm happy that the canon agrees with me on that one. Well, time to burn some more bridges with number 2. <laughs> Episode reviews. Say what? But I mean, why didn't you start your own channel with episode reviews? Isn't this what made you successful to begin with? Actually, I have two replies to this. First, back when I started episode reviews with season three, there have only been Golden Fox, Paleo, Travis Kang, Buck Brony, Josh Scorcher, Anthony C, and Tommy Oliver doing this. There was a realistic chance to have an original thought about an episode that has not already been made by 50 others. Seriously, how much analysis can you squeeze out of a 22 minute episode of a casual show that is in its seventh season by now? Back then, the market was simply still fresh and not oversaturated. Second, the biggest videos on most Brunalysis channels are, as I pointed out in my MTO Digibrony success video, not episode reviews, but videos with original topics. 
I tried to rekindle my own motivation to produce episode reviews unsuccessfully multiple times and I can't recall when I last watched one by somebody else. For me, weekly MLP episode reviews have become the epitome of unoriginality. Number 2 Yay! Non-show style animation Here's the problem with show style animation. It needs to be flawless, otherwise it looks sloppy or at least uncanny. If you get the emulation down perfectly, awesome! This is a fantastic achievement. However, as impressive as it is a testimony of one's animation skills, for me as a viewer it, well, just looks like the show. And this is what makes non show animation interesting by default. It looks original, new, exotic. Even cinematics like Inkpot's Count of Monte Cristo are able to turn heads because they have a unique look. Hand-drawn styles like Kanishi Pandas or Crown Princes have that organic look that the clean flash puppets of the show could never reach. The list goes on. Animated James cartooniness, Captain Horse stylization, Picapetis charm a la Ren and Stimpy. I would even go this far and include SFM animations. While the open source character of this tool and its Puppets has kind of destroyed the uniqueness aspect of those animations, the visuals some of the higher level animators like Phyrexus can achieve with it are breathtaking and once again something impossible in show style. If you prefer show style overall, good for you. I love diversity. Number 1 Zealot Bronies You know who I mean. The ones who call MLP the greatest thing ever and can't stop shoving it into people's faces, breeding more haters than any cringe compilation ever could. The ones that get honestly offended and aggressive if you support a ship that conflicts with their OTP, if you dislike their favorite character or like the objective of their loathing. The ones who don't respect the privacy of show staff or better known members of the community and outright stalk them at conventions and sometimes even in real life. The ones so entitled that they harass content creators for deviating from pony 24 7. The ones who can't take any critical thought directed towards their favorite pastime. The ones that send death threats to the writers if a character doesn't get represented in the way they prefer. <sighs> there are individuals claiming to be bronies out there that are worse and more destructive than the zealots. But these are most likely fanny flaps and tossers in general unrelated to the fandom. But honest fans gone bad pulling this kind of bollocks in the name of bronydom. I think are the worst thing coming out of this fandom. Number 1 yeah! Fan fictions and their audio adaptations. Yeah, well, guess that one should not surprise the people who know me. I expressed more than once over the last two years that nowadays fan content interests me far more than the actual show. And leading this field are fan fiction. Now, you could call me a stinking hypocrite given that I dismissed fan made games, cosplays, and music as meh because they are not inherently good or bad and need to be judged individually. And I can't completely deny that you have a point there. Over on fan fiction is a lot of trash, and my attempts to highlight some gems through reviews barely makes a difference. However, here are two counterpoints to consider. First, this is labeled ANY's Top 5 Year NA Brony Things, and MLP fanfiction manages to play a big role in my life to this day. Most novels I read nowadays are from film fiction, and when I want to listen to an audiobook, it often enough is a pony story. While I can enjoy a good brony song when I hear it or a cosplay when I see it, I don't feel the urge to seek them out. And trying to figure out why this might be brings me to second. Many fanfictions have something a song or cosplay is barely capable of. They really only work within the fandom. A song that rocks, rocks, no matter if it's about ponies or not. Just take the offsprings you're gonna go far kid and Forest Rain's cover Welcome to the Herd. A sexy Rainbow Dash cosplay will also look sexy to a non-brony, but a fantastic fanfiction like Withdrawal or Hard Reset does really only work if you are familiar with the show. The epicness of Upheaval will really only reveal itself to a brony. And that's why fanfictions are my personal favorite thing that came out of this fandom. What are your top 5 yays and nays of the fandom? Let us know. This is Ain My Pony saying, see you soon.